Hello, everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Joshua chapter 2, verse 10, Hebrews chapter 8, verse 13, and 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 3. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Lord God, for all you've done. Thank you for the mighty gifts that you have given to us. We give you all the praise and the glory. We say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Joshua chapter 2, verse 10. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the waters of the Red Sea before you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan, to Sion and Og, whom you devoted to destruction. All right, and so we know that this is specifically speaking about Rahab um, speaking to the spies um, about what the conquest of Israel, um, and this, she started out at the Red Sea, right? The deliverance of the Hebrews from Egypt, which had been 40 years earlier, right? So the fear began over 40 years earlier right? The, their hearts began melting 40 years earlier when they were delivered out of Egypt. And when they crossed the Red Sea, that great and mighty miracle was still in the minds and in the hearts of people. And so, um, you know, you can look at it as if it's just, um, just the, the children of Israel, but they knew that it was more than just the children of Israel, but that God was on their side. And so their hearts were in fear, right? And and that was so much to the faith of, of, of the people, right? When you know that the enemy doesn't have anything on you, right? The enemy is has is not to be compared to what your God can do for you. That is an amazing thing, right? It can help you move forward. It can help you grab hold of, of the things that are ahead and it can help you press on. Why? Because it's not about you. It's about God and his will being accomplished on earth as it is in heaven. Stay with God stick with God, right? He's gonna, he's gonna perform mighty acts and wondrous works. Yes, you may be going through a dragging time. Yes, you may be having a hard, hard bout, right? But God knows where the end is. God knows just how far he can push this thing and birth this character in you. He can cause you to be lifted up. He can cause your mindset, your countenance, your your um, perspective to be changed. Lord, help our perspectives, right? So so make sure that you are not as, as the children of Israel who did not enter into the rest were right? You want to walk by faith and not by sight. You want to see the giants in the land and say, we could take them, right? You don't, you don't want to have that mindset of, oh, we're like grasshoppers, right? We don't need to have that grasshopper mindset. We need to have that, uh, we can take them mindset. This land is ours mindset. Amen. All right. And so the second scripture that the Lord gave me was Hebrews chapter eight, verse 13. And speaking of a new covenant, he makes the first one obsolete. And what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away. All right. And so we know that this is Paul writing this letter to the Hebrews. And it is basically speaking of the old versus the new covenant. Right. And and so during Paul's time, um, they were still doing animal sacrifices. Right. But he knew that that was coming to an end. And so that's why he's speaking of the old covenant being um, becoming obsolete, growing old, ready to vanish away. And remember, when they ended it um, the this time um, and the temple was um, ransacked, it was never enacted again. And so it still to this day has not um, begun um, again. 
And so it says, in speaking of a new covenant, he makes the first one obsolete. So it is, it is outdated. It is outmoded, right? And so it says, and what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away. So God has a new thing in store for us, right? And so we know that it has vanished away right? That old way of doing things, that old animal sacrifice system. Um, We're speaking of the new covenant, right? We're speaking of what God is pressing us into now. But guess what? The reputation of God is still there, right? His power, his greatness is still there. We don't have anything to boast about, but it, it is God, right? He goes before us. And we're not talking about just the physical enemies in this world. We're talking about spiritual enemies. We're talking about enemies that are in heavenly places, you know, um, demons and, and darkness and, and these, these realms um, that are trying to set themselves up against us. We're looking forward to this new covenant because we can operate in great power and great strength and in great might through the Holy Ghost, right? He is the one who is able to charge us in the spirit. He is the one who is able to build us up right? So that our boast is not in ourselves, but in the most high God who is all powerful. We need to realize that it is his reputation that the enemy can see, right? When the sons of Sceva came in and they were casting out these demons and they did not believe, they were saying, um, they weren't, they weren't preaching in the name of Jesus. They were speaking in, in the name of Paul who preached Jesus or something like that. It was like a one-off. Right. And the 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 enemy said, you know, Paul do the demon said, Paul, do I know? I know. But Jesus, I know. But who are you? Right. It, it's the power of God that we are operating in. It is Christ Jesus himself that we can flow in. Right. You have to know him who for yourself. Right. It, it, these things are these things are spiritual matters. Right. And and we have to realize that that the enemy can see whose team you're on. The enemy knows where you come from. You have a reputation and it's not built in how many how much you've done. It's built in the power of God that you have operated in. Right. God's power. Not our own, but God's power, God's flex, right? He doesn't even have to flex, right? He's God, <laughs> he does, right? So it says, in speaking of the new covenant, he makes the first one obsolete and what is becoming um, is what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away. So God is causing our our enemy to see um whose team we're on. He's intimidated, right? And and we can look forward to all these promises and operations and dealings and authority um in Christ Jesus. And and we can operate fully in that as sons of the most high. Amen. All right. And so the um the second the third scripture that the Lord gave me was 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 3. But at, but I am sending the brothers so that our boasting about you may not prove empty in this matter so that you may be ready as I said you would be. All right. And so this is Paul talking to the Corinthian church and he is um, making his brag in the Lord about the Corinthian church. Right. And so um, I want to say he, they call them Achaia. And, and so he was b basically saying that these they're growing, they're maturing in faith. They can stand strong, right. They give, right. They're big givers. They are, they are people of God. Right. And he was making his boast on them and so um they were they were going to almost like be tested right so when when the speaker was coming the the people were coming to preach to them um they they had promised to give a gift they said that they were going to give a monetary gift and so um Paul was sending these men men ahead of the way um and he they wanted to um to go and um make sure that the monetary give was in place so that when the 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 person came 
it wasn't as if they were extracting money or doing a shakedown or anything. It was just like already arranged. Everything was in place. And so he was saying, you know, when when I come, you guys don't don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. We talking about the most high God. Right. <laughs> He's saying you need to be in place. You need to be operating in faith. Right. You need to be working by faith and you need to be standing strong in faith. When I come, don't come down there and let me be up here talking about y'all. And then I come over there and y'all y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Right. So God wants when he comes, he wants us to be standing firm in faith. Right. He wants to find his church in their rightful place. He wants people to be operating in their gifts, not taking a hiatus. Right. He he wants he wants the those who are supposed to be preaching to be preaching. He wants those who are to be prophesying to be prophesying. He wants those who are in service to be serving. He wants the man who's supposed to be taking out the trash to take out the trash and the guests don't come in and they see the trash overflowing. Right. He wants the body to be in full operation when he gets there. Right. It says, but I am sending the brothers so that our boasting about you may not prove empty in this matter so that you may be ready as I said you would be. So so God is coming. Christ is coming for his church and he wants to find you ready and waiting, operating in your gift. Um, um, when when we are operating under this new covenant, we can draw on the power of the Holy Spirit. We can draw on the power of God. Why? Because we can go boldly before the throne at any point in time. So if you've been lingering in other places and not before the throne, it's going to be seen, right? It's going to be proven. People can see that in the way that you deal with others, right? They, they can see that you don't look like your father. Right. You're not operating like the father. You're operating like the rest of the world. Help me, Lord. Right. We we need to be ready because the infamy of our God is behind us. He is he is famous in in the spirit realm. When the enemy sees us, he sees God, the father. He don't he don't see us. Right. He sees that huge angel that's standing behind you. He sees Christ Jesus at your side. Right. Your rear guard. Right. He sees those things. And so you looking at it like it's me. Right. He's scared of me. No, he's not scared of you. He's scared of the most high God that is behind you. Right. God is shining down on you. Let your boasts be in the Lord and be in place when God comes. Don't be in some other place saying, oh, this is what I do. Right. This is how I am. This is who I am. And you're you're over here doing other things when God is saying, hey, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm letting you know. Right. You're supposed to know me. You're supposed to be of me. So, so be in rightful place, be in right standing. Um, I, I once, uh, had a, a dream and the dream disturbed me so bad. And, and I remember, you know, the Lord telling me to go to a certain specific, um, place. It was, it was after the altar call, it was for those who were getting saved and for me to go through there and, um, get prayer. And so I was like, Ugh, I don't want to go through all of this because I don't want everybody to think I'm joining the church and I've been part of the church for a long time and so um not a super long time but you know long enough to where <laughs> it would be noticed if you went up to the altar um for a salvation and so this was what the Lord told me to do and I did it and I went to the back because I wanted prayer about this one dream that I had and the woman of God that was there she just was ready in power you know, she was a woman who was, you know, administering in her capacity, um, which was new members and salvation. But when I tell you I went to this woman, it was just a woman who was in power, ready and waiting to impart that anointing. Right. And so we that's how we have to be. Right. We we can't say, oh, I wasn't expecting it. I wasn't ready right let me try again sometimes you don't get a uh, uh, another ready let's go right sometimes you need to be ready right when you're in walmart you need to be ready 
when you are when you are pumping gas you need to be ready and we need to be ready when Christ comes we need to be ready when Christ sends someone who is him in the in in this world right the least of these amen all right you guys let's pray thank you father god for this word thank you that your fame is just throughout the world lord god thank you that you are able to redeem thank you that the enemy knows you lord god thank you that that we are on your team and we don't have to fear because the the you're more than the whole world against us lord god we love you we praise you we ask you to forgive us for all of our sins and help us to heed your voice in these times lord god even when it gets hard help us to heed your voice we love you lord we praise you we ask you to forgive us forgive us lord for the times we were not in place forgive us for the the actions that we have done that have not looked like you, God. We've all done something that just doesn't look like you, God. And we say sorry. Forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for grieving your Holy Spirit. Forgive us for not operating in the power that we know to be inside of us through your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. You all have a blessed day and take care.